Hey gang, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a minute since I've been here and for that I do apologize. I actually had a video that I had in the hopper a week ago today and I decided not to upload it because I was a crying mess and I didn't feel like you guys probably wanted to see that only because I know with the struggles that I deal with, with depression and anxiety, I did not want that to be a trigger for any of you to add on to anything that you may be potentially dealing with yourself to add on to your stress level because I know myself, I can only deal with so much. And um, so I just didn't upload it. And I just felt that it was better for me to not do that and to wait until I was in a better place so that I could talk to you when I had a little bit better mind frame. I had hoped to maybe upload yesterday. Yesterday was not a good day for me either. Today is a better day. Today is a much better day. As you all know, if you've been with me for the last few um, videos, I had told you that I was going to increase my topiramate from 50 milligrams up to 75 milligrams, which I did. I stayed on that for probably about three weeks and I have since decreased myself back to 50. I truly believe that, and I apologize if you could hear the the traffic going by and stuff. I'm right along a uh, main highway here, so and it's beautiful outside, so people are taking their motorcycles, so I digress. But anyway, um, there's just something with the Tapiramate that it just messes with my with my uh, hormones or my my um, my depression severely and so I backed off to the 50 sorry I'm just trying to be a little bit better um, trying to remember everything that I want to be able to share with you today let's see um, the journey of weight loss is not an easy one at least not for me I watch and I listen and I read to so many, you know, eat less, and exercise more, and it'll just happen. And while I know in theory that's all well and good, I also know that my brain doesn't necessarily function like that. And I guess I just need a better outlook on things. And um, which was why I got on to Pyramid in the first place, because I thought that it was going to help me to um, whatever might be off um, chemically in my brain, that it would help me to not eat so much and to help me lose weight, which it did initially. I mean, I lost like 36 pounds and then I gained back a little bit and I have plateaued and I have been sitting at the same weight I gained back what was it, six or eight pounds, and I just sat here. Um, and and unfortunately, um, when I increased the tapiramid, as I said, to the 75 milligrams, for me, it really messed with my depression and anxiety. Please know that just because it did that to me doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to do it to you. 
I can only tell you from my own personal experience what is happening. What I had said in my video that was in the hopper from last week that I didn't upload was um, I was strongly considering just completely getting off of the tapiramate and that is not off of the table yet. But I'm, I'm afraid and I'm just going to be upfront and honest with you. I'm afraid that if I do, I'm afraid that all the weight that I took off will come back on, which I really can't afford that because I'm too heavy to begin with. Um, I feel like it has helped me beneficially in other ways, which I think I've mentioned in other videos where like, I hardly ever take ibuprofen anymore unless I have some aches and pains. Otherwise in my body, I hardly ever have a headache anymore. So I rarely take ibuprofen, which before I was on to pyramate, which again, for those of you who may be new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, if you don't know, Topiramate was originally um, set up for people who suffer with migraine headaches. And so later on finding that weight loss was a side effect. Who knew? So, um, so for me, the benefits as far as um, headaches has been phenomenal because I don't have the headaches like I used to. It's... And I just feel like, in some respects, like it's helped maybe to keep me healthier because, you know, knock on wood, um, when other people were getting sick, w either it with uh, bronchitis or colds or the flu or what have you, you know, thank you, Lord, I, I was dodging a bullet there. And maybe that was just circumstantial. Maybe it was you know, just because, um, maybe it had nothing to do with the medicine is what I'm trying to get at, but maybe it does. Maybe it, maybe it helped boost my immunity. I, I need to do a little bit more research on that. I really don't know for sure, but, um, that's kind of been a thought in my mind. So that's, that's another reason why, another part of why I'm still remaining on 50 milligrams. I've thought about just jumping up from 50 to 100. And then I look at myself in the mirror and go, are you nuts? Because you went from 50 to 75 and you're a bawling mess. And um, you guys are the only ones that I feel as though I can talk to about this. You are my Tapiramate family, uh, without sounding too corny. And I appreciate you guys, all of you, so much. I'm going to try not to cry, okay? Um, because no one in my um, immediate live world, <laughs> uh, I can't really talk to them because nobody else is taking it. Nobody else experiences the same things that you and I do. Um, so that's why I am so thankful that you guys are here. You, you mean so much to me. See, <laughs> see what you guys do to me. You bring me to tears. <laughs> okay. So, I'm still on 50 milligrams. I haven't quit taking it. I'm still taking it. Um, I'm going to continue to post and tell you what I'm doing and uh, what I decide upon. Excuse me. I may have to um, go back to the doctor and just talk to her about this and say, hey, you know. So we'll see. I'll keep you updated. In other news, I have been looking for a different vehicle and I am scared out of my mind about that. And you're like, well, why? Well, I'm not independently wealthy and while I would love to buy a brand new vehicle, 
there are a lot of vehicles that cost almost the same as what I purchased my house for. And so they want payments almost as much and sometimes more than what I make for a mortgage payment. And I'm not quite willing to sell my house and live in my vehicle. Call me crazy, but I'm just not quite ready to do that. Um, I'm scared because if I purchase a used vehicle, what headaches am I purchasing that someone else may have had? In all truth and honesty, I have never purchased a vehicle by myself. Um, when I was a kid, when I was in high school or just got out of high school, I, I wasn't allowed to drive to school when I was in high school. So I guess it was that summer right after I got out of high school, I bought my first car all by myself, $700 from the neighbor's. And I called her Mabel. Uh, she was an Oldsmobile Cutlass. She was a big old boat. And she saved my life. But that's a story time that if you want to hear about that, you can let me know down in the comments. But I'll... <sighs> Almost rolled at one time. Um, but the people... It was an elderly couple that I bought her off of Donald and Mabel that lived down the road from us out in the country. And... Um, so, I mean, there was no dealership to go through. There was no financing. There was no nothing. I had the money in the bank. I took it down, bought it. She was mine, free and clear. There was no payments to make, yada, yada, yada. Um, if I remember correctly, I think even my dad changed the oil for me. So, when I, later on, as part of my pay... Because I stayed living at home on the farm for a few years after high school um, as part of a as payment to me, I guess. My dad one day took my car, traded it in, and bought me a little Dodge Omni. And I love that little thing. And uh, when I got married, um, fast forward a few years later... My then-husband and I traded that and his car in for a family car. Um, anyway, so the first one was from the neighbor. The second one my dad purchased. The third one my now ex-husband and I bought together in any vehicle while I was still married. And the, the vehicle that I drive now, which is my PT Cruiser, which looks similar to, if you can see it right there, that looks just like that one. It's burgundy. Just like that. And I love her, but she's 12 years old already. It's 2007. She's got a, over 154,000 miles on her, and I have been babying her because I paid her off a few years ago after the divorce was final, and I still had probably, I want to say, a year or two of payments left on it at the time. Um, and I paid it off, and... The last few years, you know, as she's getting older, I've been working on getting, you know, I hate to say nickel and diming me because she's, she's been a really good car, but she's 12 years old. And, um, so anyway, let's just say in some respects, living life alone can suck, especially when it comes to trying to, like when I went to buy a house, I almost think buying a house was less daunting than having to buy a vehicle because I have been with my son when he has purchased a few different vehicles and I have not had the best experiences because some, not all, don't get me wrong, but there are some vehicle dealerships that look at you when you're a woman and look at you as being unknowledgeable about anything. And so they kind of, I've felt belittled, stupefied, um, for lack of a better term, better way to put it. I just don't like it. I, I, I just, I'm a pansy. I wish that it were an easier 
purchasing experience. And I've seen where there's things online where you can purchase a car online. It's like, I don't want to do that either because I want to be able to test drive the car that I want to drive, you know. Um, I don't want to just, you know, buy something online and not be able to drive it and feel it for myself and hear it and, you know. So it's like, no, that's no good. And and I had a really hard day yesterday. I was looking online again at, I've been looking the last two or three days at cars online. The one thing, I, without making this video too long or too sassy, <coughs> excuse me. Have you ever gone car shopping or just perusing online? Do you ever run into some websites where they won't let you pass to see what they have for certain vehicles unless you put your name and your email address in? Um, let's just say, unfortunately, we'll just say I just, I don't like that. I might have said a few choice things to the screen that I'm not proud of. I, I just, I don't like that. It's like, if you've got something to show, if you've got something to sell, then just show it to me. I understand that it's their tactic of, of getting your information, but then they pester the tar out of you. That happened to me uh, probably a year or two ago. Uh, there's a city north of me, about an hour and a half away, and I had mistakenly done that. They bombarded me with phone calls and text messages almost every day for months. I don't like that. It made me feel so overwhelmed. So, just so, I hate, again, I hate to sound like a pansy, but so triggered. It was like I hated every time my phone buzzed or dinged because you just kind of figured that it was, it was them, you know, stalking you. For your business it's like that's not a good way to do business in my personal opinion anyway so any website that comes up like that anymore it's like if you can't show me without me doing that you're not going to get my business because i don't do business that way <sighs> my daughter the other night she um didn't come home her husband got a hold of me. She had gone to pick up something from a town nearby. Said she was going to be right back. It was almost three hours later. He texted me and said, have you heard from her? And I said, no, she's not home yet. Because I was out earlier watching my grandbabies. And he said, no, and she's not answering her phone. Talk about panic. Add a little bit more stress to the pot. Thankfully, she'd just left her phone in the truck and was visiting with the people that she had gone to see to pick up something. Um, I'm just so thankful that she was okay. I could have hugged her and choked her at the same time. If you have kids, especially ones that can drive and that have phones and such, you know what I mean if, if you've ever experienced anything similar. I was just so thankful that she was all right. Um, let's see, my other child called me with some upsetting news yesterday, which it seems like I love him to pieces, but, um, it seems like every phone call that I get from him, there's something devastating or upsetting going on in his life. And while I am so thankful that I can be here as a sounding board for him, with the uh, depression and anxiety that I've been dealing with lately, adding that on to it, that does not help my stresses either. So long round about the bend between uh, in having increased the topiramate and all the stresses in life happening on top of it. Um, my nerves the last week have really been heightened and I so I apologize to you guys that that I didn't upload sooner 
if any of you deal with depression, I'm sure that you can understand that sometimes you just can't do it. For those of you who don't deal with depression, what a blessing. Be so thankful. If you have a friend that has depression, please don't judge them. It's so easy for somebody who doesn't deal with depression, who doesn't understand to go, just get over it. It's not that big of a deal, whatever it is they may be going through. Just get over it. If only it were that simple. Because sometimes when you get so overwhelmed, it doesn't feel that simple. Anyway, I'm rambling, so I'm going to quit. But I did want to get on here and thank you guys for being there. Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for uh, your support. And just know that I'm here. If you have any questions or comments, I know that there have been a few of you that have left some comments or possibly questions. And I apologize that I have not um, gotten back to you. And I will do that, hopefully yet today. Because that's not like me. If any of you know, I'm usually pretty prompt on responding to, even if it's just a like, a like or a response on somebody's post. I usually do that pretty promptly. I'm, I try to be very conscientious of that. But just in the headspace that I've been in the last while, Just not a good space. And being at home alone doesn't help either. You know, when you don't, if you have a significant other and you get along, be so thankful. Give them an extra hug tonight. Tell them how much you love them and appreciate them that they're there. And be so thankful that you have someone to go home to that can be a sounding board for you um, because when you don't have that, it, it does take a toll. At least it does on me. So anyway, 22 minutes in. Oh my gosh. I pray that you are healthy, that you're happy, that you're safe. I pray that you have peace in your life. Until we meet again, my friends, have a fantastic new week. And I will catch you on the flip side. Bye, guys.